some rosemary from one of the bushes um, down by the allotments. So cheers whoever that is. There's also a chilli in the oven because I got a pack of mints for £2.50 from the market and blitzed up a load of celery that I had left over. It was all going a bit floppy, some floppy carrots, some onions, bits and bobs that I had, stuck it in the food processor and blitzed it down so it was all like multicoloured vegetable mints essentially. I want to fry off the mints, I fried off that as well. So it doubles the capacity, there's a great big tray of it in there. I might show you that after anyway. So gonna get started on just some ideas with this roast chicken afterwards. I'm going to let the chicken go cold when we've had what we want from it. Gonna make a chicken broth as well. So gonna use the carrots and the potatoes that were used in the roast chicken and, and the carcass for the stock. Stretch it out, there's plenty of veg to go around and they'll eke it out for a couple of days. All right, so I'm gonna wash my hands before I start. Absolutely essential at the moment, but always essential when you're in the kitchen anyway. So really good washing hands. Remember, thumbs are important. Right round, a few fingers, back and front, wrists. This is the way they're showing you to do it on TV at the moment. So, sing happy birthday twice, I think it is. But I have just washed my hands, so I'm just showing you how to do it. Okay. Make sure you keep your cloths and your towels clean at the moment as well, and your clothes, your aprons and whatnot. Right, here it goes. With the bits that I've trimmed, where have I got? The peelings from the veg, all in there. I'm going to make a stock for that, that I said I'm going to use the chicken carcass. just to drop that one in there. So carrots, first of all, I've got these heritage carrots as I said. I'm just going to chop down the rest of the veg and I'm gonna make it all the same size so that everything cooks at the same rate. All right, so just put a few of those there for a minute. All right, make everything pea-sized, essentially. You don't have to be too fussy, I'm just showing you the size of everything that you kind of want, all right? I'll do the rest in a minute, but just to show you all the size you're after. If everything's the same size, it basically cooks at the same time. Gem's being an amazing camera woman over there. Can you chuck me out some of those peas and the beans that we've got in a second? I'm just gonna chuck these trimmings, first of all, in the stock. Mess. Time not in the kitchen much these days, Jim. <laughs> pan behind me should be getting nice and hot now. If you've got any fresh garlic and stuff like that as well, truly though, fresh garlic, fresh onions, fresh herbs. I ain't got all of it in, so I'm just gonna have to make do with what I got for a moment, and it includes a bit of pinched rosemary. So that's all nice and hot there. These are all the trimmings. Look, come and have a look. So there's onion peel. There's some skins from the carrots. I think I had a little couple of leek tops, stuff like that. If you've got celery, celery is really savoury and really works lovely in things like stock. So if you can do. All right, so I ain't being too fussy about this. This is all just rustic, okay? All right, so I'm gonna put those in. The rosemary that I got, I'm just gonna stick a few bits in and around the chicken, because that'll help make the chicken taste nice. Some people stick a lemon up, up the cavity of the chicken. I'm not gonna do that, I'm gonna save that for my booze. So we'll leave that there. This is tea sorted tonight, chicken roasters, we all know to roast the chicken. And I'm gonna to continue to chop up some carrots and bits and bobs to um, make the soup tomorrow. I'm getting one day ahead. All right, so the stock, I'm going to just cook down the bits and bobs. All right, and then the chicken carcass will go in that later when it's all picked. I'll leave that at that for the moment. Okay, so I'm just gonna finish off the last of these potatoes and put into the little veg prep pot. Gem, have we got, yeah, we have got peas and some sliced runner beans that we can use towards this. Can you check them out to me? Yeah, see if we can catch. I if I couldn't even catch that. Brutal. Right then. I've got some runner, oh, the peas were right. Lovely. So the, every 
everything really is prepped to pea size. So I'm going to put a few, throw a few peas in there, just a little bit. Everyone's got peas in the freezer. And so I've got some runner beans that were fine, but on their last legs ish, I suppose. And I'm going to give them a bit of life. So they are going to be happy, happy for us tonight with some boiling water on. And the rest of them, I'm going to just chop up that broth tomorrow. So again, chop them the same size as everything else. So they're not the freshest of all, but they're going to go into a broth and they'll all liven back up. Again, once you put some boiling water on, remember boil your green vegetables with boiling salted water, not cold water and brought up to the boil because they just go all miserable coloured and they don't stay vibrant and keep in the nutrients. So I'm just going to roughly chop these up to the same sort of size. And I might actually keep these ones in the separate dish and then when the broth's almost done chuck these in so that because these we all know don't take long at all to cook whereas the potatoes the carrots and a bit of onion that I will probably put in and fry near the time all right so I'm going to chuck those ones in there all right there that'll pretty much do for the moment I would have thought we can have a look later when it's all coming on a bit more I realized that the peas and the beans would have been better together so I don't have children with clean fingers that can be occupied picking those out so I asked Gemma to do it for me <laughs> sing a song Gem. <clears throat> peas release me let me go <laughs> sort out the escapees right I'm in the midst of sorting out the chicken we had the roast chicken for dinner and we had the breast meat off of um, the chicken and I've kept back the leg meat and I'm part way through prepping that so this is some of the pig chicken that you pick down the dark meat this is so the, the um, meat you pick off the bone literally don't make too much of it just yank it off of the bone don't put the skin in all right so pick what you can go through it afterwards and make it smaller you can run a knife over it or whatever so here we are like you pick it down get some of the um, chicken pick it down so it's like stringy some bits bigger, some bits chunky, like that. So random bits. I'll go through that a little bit more as well. It's just a little bit smaller in the moment. Um, and then the carcass and the bones are going to go in the stock. Okay. So a bit more pick chicken there. This here, literally though, with your chicken carcass, just get the heel of the knife and just hit it and cut through. The bones are soft really because they've been cooked. So chop, chop, chop like that. Okay. Over here to that stock from earlier. Just wash my hands a minute. The um the stock that I put on earlier on, my little way cat. Say hello cat. <laughs> so the stock that was earlier, come and have a little look in here. Um we have now it's I left it on for ages and it's just reduced right down, yeah. It's quite dark in colour, but that's because the things that I had in here were those heritage carrots the tops and tails of them so they were like purple red onion skins things like that i've got a bit more of that rosemary that i never used earlier i didn't put in so i'll chuck a bit of that in this stock now i'm going to put all that chicken carcass in there and then i'm going to fill it up with cold water again because remember i said about how the the cold water when it boils up pulls the flavor out of the chicken so i'm going to do that again now I'll give that one more boil up and let that simmer for a while before we watch a bit of telly this evening and there we go and then I'll let that cool off and I'll strain it and then tomorrow I'll make the soup. Okie dokie so last job for today is to pass the stock that we've made through a sieve to take all the solid content out and just leave that flavour packed stock at the bottom. Looks like quite a lot of gear there don't forget all of that is just nothing but trimmings and carcass and all stuff that we weren't going to use the flavors come from the bit of chicken meat that left on the bones there's bits in there but you can't really do anything with that now that is been utilized everything that we've had there from the, the carrots that we had we had two meals out of them the spuds so on so on the chicken the carcass laughing so that'll be ditched later sort that in a minute we'll do some dishes chicken stock there 
a little bit darker in colour than I would usually do for a chicken stock, but like I said, we're in lockdown and we're making use of whatever's knocking around. So I use some darker vegetables, brown them a little bit in the pan, don't matter, it's rustic, okay? So, last jobs then, stick away this for the night. This is the potatoes and the carrots, bits and bobs there, so going to be fridged overnight, deal with that tomorrow. I'm prepped up ahead of time, so I did the prep today, the chilli, the roast chicken, now this, gets so much done ahead of time. For those of you who got to do homeschooling, gives you a bit of more free time. I said I was going to pick through the chicken a little bit more, but I couldn't be bothered in the end. I think it's nice there, it'll break down a little bit more when it's cooking, and there's some big and small bits. So I'm going to just wrap that up, stick all this in the fridge, and uh, yeah, see ya on a fresh day tomorrow. Remember, wash your hands loads and social distancing saves lives. Hi guys, me again. It's the next day, so another day in lockdown, and we're doing this chicken broth thing. Soup, whatever you want to call it, chicken soup, chicken broth, up to you, it's your dish. Come and have a little look-see. So I strained off the stock, tonight and that's what's left it's a little bit darker in color than i usually would do but like i said i didn't have a great deal of ingredients here so i fried them a bit which creates a bit of a color on the bottom of the pan and then when i put that wine in it takes the color off so it makes it a little bit darker but it does help get a bit more taste into it you can take a bit more time if you want and perhaps cook it off in a little bit of butter and have a nice light sauce but i'm not fussed we're not here to win culinary awards we're here to get wholesome nutritious food on a budget using up absolutely everything you can get your hands on so the potatoes and those colorful carrots that i had i've drained them off and i'm going to put them in now actually i've got a lot of gear here before i go on i found a little bit of onion as well so i chopped that up to throw in because onions packed with flavor isn't it nice and tasty especially in soup i might not need all of this might do but if i don't i can just boil that up and make a nice root vegetable mash and then put that in the fridge for tomorrow or even a little baggie and freeze that too. So you don't need to waste anything. Okay, so let's chuck this in the stock. Looking like, no, oh, put it all in. Yeah, I'm gonna put it all in, looks fine. So I'm gonna chuck the onion in as well. Right, come over and have a little look-see in this bowl. Right, in this saucepan. Right, so there we are. That's gonna simmer away now. You don't need to rapidly boil it or anything. It'll take probably a good half an hour or so. Uh, you don't need to worry about overcooking those things. You can't really overcook those things. They'll, they'll be fine. So you're looking at within about 45 minutes, half an hour, 45 minutes, and then we can chuck in the chicken a bit nearer the time and then the greens at the last minute. Okay, so again, if you haven't got all these things, it doesn't matter. What's to say you haven't done a roast chicken? You might have done a bit of pork or something like that. You can strip down the pork and do the same. You might not have those runner beans. You can use tin sweet corn. You can use all different sorts that you want, okay? So there's really no hard and fast rules about what you can and can't put in these. If you haven't even got bones in the chicken carcass, you could just use chicken stock cubes or something like that. So you just, it's your, your time to make it as you want, okay? But I'm just giving you the basic ideas of how to use things up and be a little bit thrifty with what we've got knocking around our houses at the moment, okay? So I'll see you in a little while, we'll have a look at that in a moment. Right, back to this again. I said to you about half an hour, 45 minutes. I got busy as lots of you will be with other jobs and I ended up leaving it on for an hour. Perfectly fine, no dramas whatsoever. So have a little look in here now. The veggies are cooking out, great. They're all soft and lovely. Chuck that chicken in. Mix that around. And I'm going to chuck in those greens too. Like I said, could be just peas, sweet corn, any bits and bobs you've got at all. A little asparagus, peppers even, courgettes, bits all chopped up, no dramas. All right, so that is now looking a bit more like it. You can expand it a little bit with a drop of water if you need to, or if it's a bit too liquid, just boil it and reduce it down. Once those bits have cooked out, those greens, probably about another 10 minutes or so, and I'm going to just adjust the seasoning, place it up and just a little trick at the end to make it very very sexy right it's time the broth here we go all boiled up plenty in there certainly more than we need just the two of us i'm just going to check the seasoning only of the broth because i know the rest is cooked very nice gonna just put a little bit of pepper and 
pinch more salt. Move it. Mix that in. Now, I'm going to serve this up. One ladle really full of all the mix, and then one with a bit more brothy. There we go. Yeah. Now, remember when I said to you, you can sex it up a little bit? A very nice thing to do is get some butter and just put a little knob of butter into it, like that, and just mix that through like that. You don't have to do it, but it does make it very velvety and turns that cookie liquor into something that just tastes really quite luxurious. You've probably got butter, but if you haven't, you don't need it. You might have some sour cream or some creme fraiche or even a little bit of natural yogurt. Um, all the same, makes it very, very nice. So let's have a little taste. Around my mouth, most likely. It is nice, it is nice, and it's all out of leftovers. What do you think, Jen? Taste the sauce for me. Gives a nod, yay. Excellent, okay. Well, that's pretty much it. Like I say, Erin Black asked us to do a little video of bits you can use up around the house, and I think this proves that we've all got more in our cupboards than two Weetabix, some badly bruised bananas, and a pouch of cat food. So we can do this, all work together, use our minds, think about what we've got and utilize stuff while we're staying at home and keeping the country safe. Remember guys, social distancing saves lives. Keep up the good work, peeps.